Today, we will be identifying the X and Y intercepts of a graph. And I know, I'm doing the best I can with the voice I have, guys. So when we look at a graph, which we've already learned and talked about right here, we see we have the Y axis and we have the X axis. So the Y X intercept is simply what it says. It is It is the coordinate at which a graph intersects the x-axis. So if you need to, pause it up, write down that definition. So here is our x-axis, and if I look at my graph up here, right there is my x-intercept. That point where the line crosses the x-axis. So the y-intercept is simply going to be what it says the coordinate at which a graph intersects the y-axis. So on my graph up here, this is the y-axis, and this line crosses it right there. So this is my y-intercept. If you need to, pause up the video, write this down, because I'm going to begin with some problems. So now that we know what the x and y intercept are, we're going to look at some graphs. And I'm sure you can't see my graphs, but they're on your paper. So for our first graph, when I look up here, my x-intercept, that's this line right here, so right there is my x-intercept. And if you look at your paper, that point is x is negative 4, y is 0. The y-intercept, here's the y-axis, so it is right there, and that point, if you look at your paper, is located at 0, 7. For our second graph, my x-intercept is right here. Oh, there it was. I guess I had to do something funky. Oh, it's not working. But it's right there in the middle. So for the x-intercept, my point is 0, 0. And my y-intercept is the same thing because it's going through the origin of the graph. This third line does not have an x-intercept. So we're going to leave it blank. We don't put 0 because zero would be the origin, and it's not crossing the origin. We just leave it blank. It has no, there is none. We'll write that down. So there is no x-intercept. Now the y-intercept is at this point. It's being a little finicky today. And if you look on your paper, that point is zero, five. And for our last graph, our x-intercept is right there, which is at point negative 8, 0. And our y-intercept, there isn't one. This line does not cross the y-axis. So we're going to write down none. Now go back and look at each of your x-intercepts. What do you notice about them? You're right. If I find it, I guess I didn't put it there. I thought I did. Y equals zero. So for every x-intercept, Y equals zero. Now, go back and look at all those Y-intercepts. What do you notice about those? X, you got it. X equals zero. So using that information, we're now going to find x and y intercepts from an equation. So I need for you to copy down on your paper this equation. I'll make it nice and big so you can see it because as I'm looking at my video screen it's not very big. So 2x minus 6y equals 18. Now remember, we just talked about on the page before that the x-intercept, the y, is equal to 0. 
So I'm going to plug 0 in where that y is. So I get 2x minus 6 times 0 equals 18. Well, 6 times 0 is simply 0. So 2x minus 0 is 18. And using the identity property, 2x equals 18. And I simply divide both sides by 2, and I find out that x equals 9. So my x-intercept is 9, 0. Now for my y-intercept, we just learned that the x is equal to 0. So I'm going to plug in 0 where the x is. And I get 0 minus 6y equals 18. Using the identity property, negative 6y equals 18. And I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6, and I find out that y equals negative 3. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 3. I'm going to do, here are two more. If you want to, you can write them down and try them without me. And I'm going to show you the answers in about 30 seconds. I'm going to show you a fast trick that doesn't require as much writing. So knowing that the y-intercept is equal to 0, if I cover this up because anything times 0 is 0, I get 7x equals 42. Oh, I did that wrong. 7x equals 42. Divide both sides by 7 and I get x equals 6. So the x-intercept is at 0, 6. Now for the y, remember x equals 0, so if I just cover this up, it says 5y equals 42. And when I divide both sides by 5, I get an improper fraction. Now I can leave it as 42 over 5, or I can change it to 8.4. So for this, my y-intercept is 0, 42 over 5, or 0 and 8.4. So I'm going to do that fast trick again for this one. So remember, x-intercept, y is equal to 0. Cover that up, and it says x equals negative 45. That was really easy. For the y-intercept, x is equal to 0, so I cover that up, and it says 9y equals negative 45. Divide both sides by 9, and I get y equals negative 5. Sorry, guys, it keeps getting smaller and smaller. So those are my x and y intercepts when I'm given a, an equation. Last one. We're given a situation. If you read it along with me, it says Dana is on a diet. She wants to lose 75 pounds and plans on losing 3 pounds per week. Write an equation for this situation using y for pounds, left to lose, and x for weeks. So we need to use the x and y because that's what they told me to use. Remember, we're writing it as they tell the story. So the way I wrote mine is y equals, starting with the y equals, 75 minus 3x. Or you could do it the other way, 75 minus 3x equals y. So I'm going to find my x-intercept because we're going to start to talk about what does that x-intercept mean in real life. So remember, x-intercept, y equals 0. So I'm going to plug that one in. I can't just cover it up this time because then I get 75 minus 3x. So I'm going to plug in 0. I'm going to take away 75 from both sides and I get negative 75 equals negative 3, divide both sides by negative 3, and I get positive 15. So what does that 15 represent in this example? Well, at 15, we know x is weeks. So at 15 weeks, y is equal to 0, so y is the pounds. So at 15 weeks, she will have lost the 75 pounds. She'll have no more pounds to lose at 15 weeks. And that's what the x-intercept means for this situation. 
Now let's look at our y-intercept. So remember, when y-intercept, x equals 0. So if I just cover this up, I get y equals 75. If you do the fast way. I solved it out, but if you do the fast way, we would have gotten y equals 75 by simply covering this up, because that's equal to 0. What does that mean? Well, remember, x represents weeks, so at 0 weeks, y represents the amount of pounds left to lose, so at 0 weeks, she's going to have to lose 75 pounds. So the y-intercept is showing us the amount of weight she needs to lose. If you need to, pause up the video, write those down. And now I want you to try two graphs and two equations. So there's your graph, it's on your paper. Pause up the video, find your x and y intercept. I'm going to show you the answers in about 10 seconds. There's the x-intercept, there's the y-intercept for the first graph, there's the x-intercept for the first graph, there's the y-intercept for the second graph. Now I'll make these a little bit bigger. I don't know what's going on with the smart board data, you guys. Well, that didn't work. I gotta get him back up here. Sorry guys, today is gonna be one of those days I guess with my board. Let me erase that little, oh, it disappeared. Alright, remember I gotta get this exact There it is. So there's the X and Y intercept for both graphs. Check your answers. Now I want you to copy down these two equations, pause up the video, I'll make them bigger because as I'm looking at my video camera, hmm. nope, oops, let me get this, there's the magic pen. Let me try it again. I guess I have to go slow. Some wavy lines there. Nope, still not getting it. Sorry guys. The first one is 7x plus 3y equals negative 21. The second one is x minus 2y equals negative 10. So go ahead and find your x and y intercepts. I'm going to show you the answers in about five seconds this time. There they are. Check your answers. They're a little bit bigger. If you have any questions, bring them to class tomorrow and we'll talk about them.